It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. Supreme Decisions, and today I actually want to talk about the murder of George Floyd and the liability of the four officers that were involved, that were fired, and basically the liability that they have to George Floyd's immediate family. Now, most of us only know of the officer that had his knee on his neck, and that is Derek Chauvin. Well, the other three officers that were fired, one is the officer that everybody sees standing up, and that is Toe Thao. Pretty sure I mispronounced it. Who cares? The other one is Thomas Lane. He was there. He was one of the initial officers that walked up and actually helped get George out of the vehicle. And J. Alexander Cohen. And what these officers are liable, they are liable to the Floyd family civilly. But you have to understand the words immediate because what they are liable for is wrongful death because their actions led to the death of George Floyd. Now, this is something that goes outside of the regular guise of something that would qualify as something that would be under qualified immunity. But you're also going to hear me get into that later. But basically, it's one case that covers this in an entirety simply because it gives you the actual directive of how to do this and why they're liable. And it's Monroe v. Pate. It's a 1961 case. I've actually spoken about it, I believe, probably about a year ago. 365 U.S. 167. And that an officer or an employee of the state or one of its subdivisions is deemed to be acting under color of law as those depriving the rights committed in the fulfillment of tasks and obligations assigned to them. Because one of the things that you heard me say before is once an officer goes outside the guidelines of what the state can offer them as pretty much a base. That is their obligations that are assigned to them. And by one, blocking off people from intervening, as well as leaving his knee on his neck for the duration of time that was not allotted or allowed by department regulations, they are all liable because they are outside the obligations of their assignment. And a plaintiff need not pursue his state remedies for, before instituting a 1983 action. Defendants can be held under, under 42 USC 1983, even though they did not act willingly, even though they did not have a specific intent to deprive a plaintiff of a federal right, such defendants can be held to civil responsibility. This is where it comes into context. You don't even have to use this as a 1983 case if you sue them in their individual capacity because once they begin restricting people, once they took him out and held him down there long in the department regulations, they were no longer officer Chopin, Officer Chow, Officer Lane, and Officer Kill. They were Derek Chopin, Tao To, Thomas Lane, and J. Alexander Kill. They are regular people. They are no longer under the protection of um, qualified immunity. 
So just keep that in mind. These cases are important because going out and tearing up the things that are around you is not fighting back. Fighting back is actually standing up and letting them know in the court of law, hitting them in their pockets, correcting their behavior face to face with the devil that you know they are. Because once you stand eye to eye with the devil, no one else can harm you. Just keep that in mind. So that's what I have for today. The memberships are up. Go and subscribe. During the live chats, we're going to be using Super Chat. So keep these things going. We're going to keep growing. And Supreme, out.